The president has undergone an onslaught of a year, year and a half of a partisan investigation accusing him of somehow colluding with the Russians. So I think he's sensitive to that. But there's another aspect to the investigation that is a legitimate one, and that is saying, did Russians hack Hillary Clinton's uh, emails? And so there's a legitimate aspect, and then there's a partisan aspect. And we all have now concluded and all understand that the investigation was started by partisans, James Clapper, John Brennan, who started the investigation at the behest of the Clinton campaign, who paid somebody in Russia to come up with a dossier. So really, it's funny that we keep talking about Trump and Russia, when in fact the only person actually known to pay Russian agents was Hillary Clinton, who paid a British spy, who then paid yeah. British agents for dirt on, uh, concocted dirt on Trump. Yeah. Well, I know we could go down that road again, but I still think the question remains, oh yeah, we could go down that road, but we don't want the American to. intelligence community under the bus? I still think that's a well, big question uh, that people are asking, but we're going to have to leave it there, well, Senator. One of the reasons... It is an honor to be here with fellow patriots changing the world. Just like in 1776, when it was the United States of America that changed the entire status quo of being a human, where we said the individual human is independent and can be self-relying. We don't need a king or queen. We don't need and I just, an establishment. We don't need a government. We just need freedom. We just need me. We just need independence. Change the world. Change the world for good. Created the most wealth and prosperity the world's ever seen. And now here you are. You know, but the incredible thing about it is you would expect this perhaps from brainwashed sheeple that don't understand history because they were never taught it. So they don't even understand how good they have it because uh, they have no perspective. But for people on television, people in the Democrat Party to go down that same thought pattern is alarming. Look at this clip. Again, and it's like, this is why I stand with Ron Paul and Rand Paul. This is why I'm so proud to be a patriot right now because I know what history is going to say about these times. We are the people that will once again change the world for the good. Once again, say the average individual human can be self-reliant. We don't need a king. We don't need a government. You can do everything. That is America. You're free. You're independent. You're self-relying. And now they try to wash it all away. Look at how CBS News treats Rand Paul talking about Trump Putin summit. Listen, you've heard the avalanche of criticism and negativity, appalling, shameful, disgraceful, shocking. It's coming from all sides. And I'm wondering, you're here this morning, are you doing a cleanup on aisle three? Well, you know, I think we ought to take a step back and look at the bigger picture and uh, decide whether or not we want to have conversations with even our adversaries. During the height of the Cold War, during the Cuban Missile Crisis, Kennedy had a direct line to Khrushchev, and I think the world is uh, a safer and a much better place because we had that line of communication. We Senator had ambassadors. Paul, Senator to, we had, Paul, let, let me finish my okay. question. If you're going to ask questions, okay. let me finish. All right, all right. It was also, it was no, also I think, a good idea that we continue to have out. ambassadors and diplomatic relations with Russia, even though they are our adversaries. Series. Senator Paul, I don't think anybody would object to trying to have a good relationship with Russia. I think the problem what? is that what? he seemed to throw Close the it right there. Is she serious? Did she? They're all demonizing Trump. They're all demonizing Putin. They're all demonizing Russia. They're saying Russia is the enemy. And then she's like, well, I don't think anybody wants to not have a good relationship with Russia. That's exactly what you're trying to do. This is OK. Go on community under the bus while doing that is there a Actually, part of you that just, wishes I, I is there a part incorrect. of you that wishes I, I think that's incorrect i think what you just said that no one would object to him meeting with putin every democrat on capitol hill objected to him meeting exactly with putin. bingo every neoconservative and warmonger on the right also objected to it so yes the vast majority of the foreign policy community the bipartisan consensus said you shouldn't meet with putin they also said he shouldn't meet with kim and this is an extraordinary thing about president trump that should be lauded and not belittled is that 
that he is willing to meet with adversaries to try to prevent us from having uh, World War III. Senator, you talked about the uh, and that's Cold what War they want. history. They want and one a of war the with things Russia. that was distinct about both uh, President Kennedy, you mentioned, and President Reagan, was that they did two things. They both met with America's adversaries, and they were quite clear about America's moral view about the repression of both the Soviet Union and then subsequent to that, Russia now which most uh, people think is led by uh, uh, basically a dictator. What the president didn't do and is getting criticized for is he did not make that moral case. He basically said in the relationship between the two, both sides are at fault. That's the distinction here, yeah. not the whether to yeah, have but, a meeting. So what about I, that but I don't think you're, Yeah, but, but I don't think you're being fair to the president. No, they uh, never so when President been. Reagan met with uh, Gorbachev, do you think he uh, listed the uh, litany of Soviet abuses from Stalin on in a one-to-one -one meeting? No, they were listed and recounted by other people in the administration. There have also been people within the Trump administration who have listed and recounted the human rights violations in Russia. But we also have to understand that we have to deal with the world as it is, not as we wish it to be. And if we're only going to talk to people who have perfect constitutional republics, we're going to have a very small audience, and we're going to have a lot of potential conflict with no outlet for diplomacy. Sen so, no, I think the president did a good thing by meeting with Putin, and Senator I think it's a mistake for people to so try, no, to, try to turn no, this into no, a partisan, don't say that. Uh, partisan escapade. Senator, President Reagan called the Soviet Union the evil empire. Many of his most famous comments are calling out the Soviet Union on its moral shortcomings. So I think that com comparison between uh, President Reagan and President Trump is is off a bit. But let me ask you this question. It's also but been that's ridiculous. Also, but it's ridiculous. They're comparing, that, they're, comparing they're comparing Russia to the Soviet Union. I mean, that's absurd. Empire in a press conference with Gorbachev. He also sat down with Gorbachev, and we also had uh, strategic arms limitations. I'll, I'll, so they, he actually did. While the rhetoric was strong, you actually might compare that to uh, Trump's rhetoric with North Korea. It's been very strong, but he's been willing to sit down with him. I, I so think I think there's actually some apt comparisons between Reagan here, and Trump the, on the diplomatic front. The difference here is, Senator, the President Trump is not short about uh, offering criticism to American allies, whether it's on the German this gas deal or whether they immigration is They want Rand Paul to Europe, say Trump bad so much. They're just one, just say Trump is bad. Just say he's bad, Rand, just say it. Himself in a one-on-one -on -one inter interview, bends over backwards to say nice things about the Russians, and that that robs yeah. him of an opportunity to make a clear moral case about the distinction right. between America, which has grown up and had a history of supporting freedom, and the Russian regime, right. which does not do think, so. And, and, and why and not take this, that opportunity think, as think, an American yeah, president? I, th I think this what, what this gets into is that the president has undergone an onslaught of a year, year and a half of a partisan investigation accusing him of somehow colluding with the Russians. So I think he's sensitive to that. But there's another aspect to the investigation that is a legitimate one, and that is saying, did Russians hack Hillary Clinton's uh, emails? And so there's a legitimate aspect, and then there's a partisan aspect. And we all have now concluded and all understand that the investigation was started by partisans, James Clapper, John Brennan, who started the investigation at the behest of the Clinton campaign, who paid somebody in Russia to come up with a dossier. So really, it's funny that we keep talking about Trump and Russia, when in fact the only person actually known to pay Russian agents was Hillary Clinton, who paid a British spy, who then paid yeah. British agents for dirt on, uh, concocted dirt on Trump. Yeah. I know, we can go down that road again, but I still think the question remains, oh, yeah, we can go down that road, but we don't want the American to. intelligence community under the the bus. I still think that's a well, big question uh, that people are reasons, asking, but we're going to have to leave it there, well, one Senator. Of the reasons for, one of the reasons for it is James Clapper's a known uh, liar who's lied to Congress. So well, that's, so for that's someone who's for problem. transparency, Senator, a lot of people were outraged that this meeting took place privately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that You're was an outrage. As well, but we're going to have to leave it there. We appreciate uh, you I'm sorry. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, we, got, we got Rand Paul on here. Uh, we, we were hoping that he would say that Trump is bad and and we and we we pressed him on it, and for five minutes we tried to get him to say Trump bad, and he he wouldn't say Trump bad. So sorry, uh, Rand Paul, we have no interest in having you on air anymore. Sorry. Unless you want to say Trump bad, Rand, do you want to say Trump bad? Oh, okay, you don't want to say Trump bad. Okay, sorry. Then you cut cut the segment. Cut him off. Cut him off. Cut him off. They're so deranged that they're comparing the Trump Putin summit to Pearl Harbor. Do you know how offensive that is? And now you're seeing these stories. I can't even find them on my desk. It's fine. Where Trump, they're, 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 here it is. They're trying to say that Trump is walking back his statements or, or he didn't go far enough with his statements with Putin. Here, here's, the, here's the thing. Here's the subtleties and the nuance about Donald Trump that, that the media doesn't understand. See, Trump is so much smarter than them 
and he can see five moves ahead. So, so he knows how to play the chessboard. If Donald Trump would have lambasted Vladimir Putin during the Trump-Putin summit, if Donald Trump would have said, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, they were hacking, they're really bad, they were hacking, they meddled, oh, yeah. If he would have done that, the entire news cycle the next day would have been, look, President Trump admits Russia rigged the election. Look, President Trump admits that he won because of Russia. Look, President Trump admits his presidency is illegitimate. That would have been the, the narrative. That would have been the talking point. Instead, he knows that if he has a good relationship with Putin, the media will go off their rocker and just go completely psycho and compare it to Pearl Harbor. So Trump outsmarted you again, you anti-American scum. You know, someone very profoundly once said many years ago that if fascism ever comes to America, it'll come in the name of, li of liberalism. He goes to jail! He goes to jail! <laughs> If you are receiving this transmission, you are the resistance. Our team is always looking for new ways to improve our products. That's why we've created the newest version of a fan favorite formula, the Real Red Pill Plus. The Real Red Pill Plus contains the powerful pregnenolone formula, now with an added energy boost. Now, you can support your heart, brain, and aging process with an added natural energy boost. The proprietary energy blend includes powerful ingredients like green tea extract, yerba mate leaf extract, and more. Paired with the powerful ingredients in the original Real Red Pill formula, the Real Red Pill has just what you need to support your body while getting the pick-me-up to get you through the day. The Real Red Pill Plus is a powerful investment into the future of your mind and body. Don't miss out on the all-new upgrade to your favorite product. Head to InfoWarsStore.com and get the Real Red Pill Plus today. Real Red Pill Plus is on sale now while supplies last.